All right, guys, this is a uh, the first in a series of webcasts that will uh, introduce you to basic plant structure and function. So first of all, I just wanted to uh, get you kind of a general overview of the main organs in vascular plants. Those are the roots, which I'll show you here, uh, are the down here at the bottom. These would be the roots of a plant. The main function of the root is really to uh, hold the plant in place within the soil. It's also going to be very important in um, the uh, pulling in of nutrients and water into the plant. Uh, water is the main thing and then it's also going to pull in um, nitrogen, phosphorus and many other nutrients. The next area we'll point out is the stem. The main functions of the stem are to hold the plant up uh, towards light. Uh, hold the leaves up towards light, and um, also it's going to be really important in transporting of water and sugars and other nutrients back and forth between the roots and the leaves. Finally, the leaves are going to be the main area of photosynthesis that we've talked a lot about before in class. Um, so once again, production of sugar using sunlight and carbon dioxide and water, um, and then also as a byproduct of, of photosynthesis, you're going to get a lot of production that, of oxygen that is obviously very important for us to breathe as well. Um, first thing also, well, our next thing to talk about is really that um, there are two main types of roots. You have what are called fibrous roots, uh, which are basically um, roots that do not have kind of one main root. They just have a bunch of smaller roots. So this would be a great example of a, of a fibrous root. Grasses have fibrous roots. Corn would also be a great example of fibrous roots. Many monocots that we'll learn about later are going to generally have fibrous root systems. If you compare that then to a taproot, right, a taproot is going to have one main root that kind of runs down the middle like I'm outlining here with the pen and then it's going to have smaller roots that come off of it. A carrot is a great example of a fibrous root. Um, dandelions, which is this, bit, this is basically a picture of, is a great example of a, fi of a uh, tap root. Once again, carrots, tap roots, dandelions, tap roots. Um, many of the trees, dicot trees that you have in your backyard, that sort of thing, are actually tap roots in nature. Um, this just shows you kind of the basics of a monocot root, and I'll just point out some of the major structures, and we'll, I'll show you some other diagrams related to that in a little bit too. By the way, a lot of the structures that I talk about you can find in your lab manual. If you look on the notes page that talks about roots and stems, it's on page 156 of your lab manual. Um, so first here, here's a, a monocot root, and I'll outline a few things on here for you. Um, the outermost part of the root, this kind of layer out here. I'm just going to show it in this region, but it goes all the way around the plant. That's going to be the epidermis. It's going to be there for protection. It's going to be there for um, absorption of nutrients. And then coming off the epidermis, you're going to have root hairs. The root hair, the main function of the root hairs is going to be to increase surface area so that more water um, and nutrients can be absorbed. This central layer of the root is going to be the cortex. And the cortex, a lot of it is going to be um, for uh, storage of sugars. It's also going to be for transport of water into the vascular cylinder. The vascular cylinder is this area that's kind of yellow that I'm outlining in red right here. And the vascular cylinder is going to contain two main substances. It's going to contain xylem, which are these larger tubes that I'm outlining kind of in red. Those xylem is going to transport water up to the um, up to the leaves for photosynthesis and then you have these smaller tubes which are xylem so like in here and around that's all going to be um, I'm sorry phloem so the smaller tubes are phloem and that those are going to transport sugars down into the roots and then once again the sugars are going to be stored out in this cortex layer out here um, once again xylem the larger tubes they're going to transport water up to the leaves Phloem is going to transport sugar down to the roots. This just shows you a um, diagram with uh, that's already labeled for you. Um, so you can see, once again, some of the things we've mentioned. Root hairs are going to increase um, surface area. The epidermis is going to be there for protection. 
Um, the endodermis is just the outer layer of the vascular cylinder. We'll talk a little bit about what that does in a second. It helps kind of pump in nutrients to increase absorption for the um, for uh, the roots. The xylem is the larger tubes in the vascular cylinder. In dicots, which this is a dicot root, the xylem is arranged into a star. The um, pericycle is kind of an outer, it's kind of a layer associated with the epidermis. A lot of times what happens is uh, lateral roots can form from the pericycle. And other than that, it just kind of helps support the endodermis. Phloem, like we talked about, phloem is going to... Um, is going to uh, transport sugars, pr primarily made by the leaves, and then transported down to uh, the root. And then the cortex is really where those sugars are stored. And also the cortex is going to be important in kind of transporting the waters into the vascular cylinder. So those are some of the major structures. Um, the diagram that you have uh, shows you kind of some of the labeling of these things. This is the diagram that you're going to be responsible for on quizzes and tests. You can notice that A on here is the phloem, the smaller tubes in the vascular cylinder. Once again, transport of sugar. Xylem are the larger tubes, which is D on your diagram. That's going to be transport of water. Um, B is going to be the pericycle, which is layers of tissue just inside the endodermis. Like I said, these can often form lateral roots in the plant, kind of from that from that area. The endodermis is going to be kind of a really important in the regulation of nutrients passing into the vascular cylinder. A lot of times, nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus are going to be. Um, uh, and if I show this on, on here with the pen, ni uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, th things like that, other ions are going to be actively transported into the vascular cylinder, um, and then water is going to pass by diffusion. Same thing happens in the epidermis. The nutrients, the nitrogen, phosphorus, salts, other things that might be pulled into the plant are going to be transported by active transport, and then the water is going to follow by Passive transport or just osmosis, basically. Once again, E is going to be this region where the, which is the cortex. That's where you have storage of sugar. It's also where there's water moving into this um, vascular cylinder. So I draw a little arrow there for that. So those are some of the basic structures. You might want to pause this and make sure you kind of fill in your diagram and, and get all these parts. Um, this just shows you kind of what's going on in both the... Um, uh, endodermis and then to some extent the epidermis of the plant. What's happening is a lot of um, nutrients and things like that are being pumped across let me mark this up with the pen a little bit here. Um, a lot of nutrients like sucrose, sugars, um, things like that are being uh, hydrogen ions are being pumped across in some way um, through uh, and nitrogen and stuff like that are being pumped across through active transport, and then the idea is then, then the water is going to follow by osmosis, and that's going to kind of move it. We'll talk a little bit about that in class. We'll kind of go over this in class as well, but that gives you the basics at least. Um, this just shows that, so now we move into uh, stems, and we'll talk a little bit briefly about stems as well. Stems, remember, are going to hold the, um, the leaves up to sunlight, and they're going to have a different structure than the roots. And once again, if we kind of point out some of the major um, portions of it, I'll just kind of outline them on here. It's already kind of labeled for you. But um, epidermis is just going to be kind of outer protective layer um, for the stem. And then you're going to have what's called pith. Pith, as I circle it here, is just kind of like, it's very much like cortex. It's pretty much the same idea as cortex. It's just kind of the main um, structural cells gives... Um, kind of fills the area within the stem, gives it structure, helps hold it up, um, that sort of thing. And then basically you have vascular bundles that are in the stem. In a um, monocot stem, the you're going to have scattered vascular bundles. Um, and so they're going to um, be kind of all over the stem, kind of randomly throughout it. Um, in each of those, you're going to have smaller, I'm going to point it out on another one, you're going to have... Uh, larger circles, you kind of make a little monkey face here on these, and those larger circles are going to be the xylem that's transporting water up to the leaves, and then the smaller tubes kind of around it in this region, the smaller ones you'll see, like it's labeled over here, that's going to be the phloem. So the phloem is the smaller tubes, the larger tubes are going to be the xylem like it's labeled up here. 
And once again, xylem transports water, phloem is going to transport sugars. So that's a monocot stem. Um, and once again, this is the monocot stem that you guys are responsible for. So if you look at this on here, you can see A is the pith or cortex. I'll kind of mark that up real quick on here just to highlight it. So you can see, hey, here's the kind of cortex or pith. It kind of fills the space and adds structure to the, to the stem. You've got B on here is going to be the vascular bundles that are going to have the xylem and phloem. So if you're looking at it more specifically, then C on here, the larger tubes are going to be xylem, and then the smaller tubes within the vascular bundle are going to be, be phloem. And then finally, E on here, epidermis is just that kind of that outer covering around around the stem. This just shows you a close-up of a monocot stem and it shows you a vascular bundle. So you can see there's a little monkey face. And uh, once again, you can see, uh, oops, I'll go back here. Um, if I highlight this with the pen, you can see these larger tubes are going to be uh, xylem, right? Kind of outlining it here in red. And then these smaller tubes like this in a bunch are going to be phloem. Xylem, once again, is going to transport water, and phloem is going to be transporting sugar. Uh, this just shows you a, uh, a um, this is actually, I believe, celery, and it just shows you um, the scattered vascular bundles that are in there. So each one of those is going to have xylem and phloem. Each of those circled structures are going to be um, vascular bundles for that plant. Um, this just shows you some of the main differences between monocots and um, dicots. Monocots have one cotyledon or seed leaf. Uh, dicots have two cotyledons or seed leaves. So, for instance, corn is a good example of a monocot. If you have a corn kernel, that's a monocot seed. If you have a peanut, that's a good example of a dicot seed. It has two kind of parts to it when you pop it open. Um, the veins on monocots, and I'll mark this up a little bit with the marker, um, the veins on monocot leaves are going to be um, parallel. So they're going to have parallel venation. They all run in the same direction, whereas the veins of dicots are going to have net-like veins. So a lot of trees like maples and oaks and sycamores and things like that are all going to be dicots. Like we said earlier, the vascular bundles in monocots are going to have scattered vascular bundles. Okay, the vascular bundles in dicots are going to be arranged in a ring. That's why they also tend to produce woody tissue. They're going to produce wood. And that's why um, if you think of tree rings on a tree, like I said, those are going to be dicot, uh, dicot plants. Dicots, as I said earlier, are going to tend to have a tap root, right? Whereas monocots are going to tend to have a fibrous root. And then as we'll get into flowers later on, monocots are going to have their floral parts or flower parts in multiples of three, where dicots are going to have their floral parts in multiples of four or five. This just shows you kind of a woody dicot, and it shows you um, some of the different structures. So you have um, what's called the primary xylem, which is in the middle here. I'll kind of point this out with the pen once again. Um, so you can see the primary xylem in here. That's kind of going to be kind of the, the kind of what we a lot of times think of as wood, although phloem is involved in the two. You have this structure called vascular cambium, which is right in this region. The function of the vascular cambium is to produce more what's called secondary xylem and um, secondary phloem. It's what forms the all the different. Um, kind of layers of wood and the annual uh, tree rings um, that you see. A lot of times those are the different layers of the actual xylem in, um, in the tree. So we'll talk more about this as we go along. Um, this is the diagram the, uh, that you have that you've been given that's already labeled for you that shows you some of these different layers, kind of going from the outside in. Um, you've got I'll just mention them briefly. You've got the cork and cork cambium. Those basically end up making up the bark of um, the tree. The cork is primarily the bark, and the cork cambium produces kind of the bark or the cork of it. Um, you have cortex, which is out here, is which is kind of the filler um, from the primary layer. Um, and then you've got phloem, which is kind of outside kind of the main um, vascular cambium. And then you have... Um, vascular cambium, which produces the secondary xylem and phloem. It makes new vascular tissue. That's the function of vascular cambium. And then basically in here you have xylem that's in. There's a difference between um, summer xylem and spring xylem. 
Spring xylem, which is seven on here, is going to have, when there's a lot of rain like there is now, um, it's going to make large xylem tubes that can carry a lot of water and also aren't concerned that much with water loss. Fall, or I'm sorry, summer xylem, when it's really dry out, the xylem tubes, as you can kind of see in here, the xylem tubes get thicker and they also get narrower. In other words, less water is transported through them. So that gives kind of the darker uh, strand within the wood as, as you kind of see it. And then if you go in further from there, you get some of the primary xylem and um, some of the pith or just kind of inner part of the wood. So if I show you that on um, this, this, this next slide, just kind of shows you some of the xylem tubes and shows you at kind of different stages. Um, this right here, would be, as I circle this, this would be spring xylem, and then maybe over here this would be more kind of summer summer xylem when it's uh, thicker and narrower. Um, and here's some tree rings. So this is xylem, The um, and once again I'll outline this in red. Uh, this would be, right in here, is going to be uh, summer xylem, right? And then right below that I'll outline that in blue, if I can. And that would be, here would be your spring xylem. So once again, when there's more water, it's going to make bigger tubes. Uh, they're going to be less dense, and so it's going to be lighter in appearance. The red area is going to be darker in appearance. And so and you that's where your annual rings. So from, let's say, going back to red here, from, sp one, sp one, from one summer xylem to the next summer xylem is one year. So that's how you can measure a tree's growth by looking at the tree rings. It's the it's the summer xylem to summer xylem that's gonna that's gonna show it to you there. Um, you can also look at different patterns. So there's certain regions when there weren't as much spring xylem. So on this picture, you have areas like here, let me get the color up, but you have areas like here, right in this region, um, that you can have drought where and like right here, you can see some regions where it's drought, whereas maybe in another region, I'll outline this one in blue if I can, um, where you have a lot of water that occurred during this region. So the regions, the times when there weren't as much water, it actually shows up in the tree rings. Um, so this just shows an overall, uh, overall stem. So you can see kind of the bark on the outside, which make is which is made up of that. Um, cork and cork cambium and then um, you're going to have um, some of the phloem that's out here and then most of it is going to be xylem in here and then some of the older wood and things like that makes up kind of this heartwood of um, of the tree. Um, you can do a core sample they can actually look at some of these different things um, some of the older uh, wood is going to be uh, really towards the interior here. The wood that is actually being used, the xylem is used, being used to transport um, uh, things are going to be more towards the outside. So a lot of times that's called the sap wood. So if you hammer into that, that's where the, the sap and that sort of thing are flowing. Um, and then, you know, the and, and the flow towards the outside, that sort of thing. Okay, this is actually somebody getting um, uh, maple a maple sugar or maple sap from a maple tree to make, um, let's say, maple syrup or some other type of um, thing from that. And so we'll talk, I'll finish here, we'll talk about leaves on another time.